All right, now we need to deal with the brutes. Go ahead and grab a plasma pistol or two. Leave your laser right there for the time being. Now there's a rather large number of them composed of mainly spikers and maulers. We're going to combo kill as many as we can, and we're also going to use the Arbiter and his Fuel Rod Cannon uh, to deal a good amount of the hurt. Now because of all the drones we killed back in the previous area, if you run out of plasma pistol ammo, you can easily get some more. I'd let the Arbiter go ahead and take advantage of the Mauler Brutes. Or as much as you'd like for that matter. You know what, this is the only time of the level besides the last little bit where you'll get to use the Arbiter. So take advantage of them while you can. Let's, let's push them up there, let's give them a boost. Come on little buddy. I know you want to. Come on. Sometimes he needs a little shove. Oh! You need to know what weapon you're holding, look at your shadow. Alright. Now usually when their numbers have been, been decimated enough, They'll retreat back into that hallway. So just be aware. Well, that's the first intelligent thing I've seen a brute do the whole level. If you need more ammo, just go ahead and backtrack. Grab another plasma pistol. And continue to dish out the hurt. Bubble shield should be gone by now. Continue to strafe left and right as they try to shoot at you. Uh, there's still another armored one up there. Well, we don't know if he has a mauler or a spiker, so just be careful. Oh, but it doesn't matter now. Double check to make sure, and it looks like we got them all. All right, we're at the last tower. Make sure you have a Spartan laser, some stockpiled plasma pistols, and some sort of a mid-range weapon, either a battle rifle or a carbine. You're going to be facing a war chieftain armed with a plasma cannon and four, count of four, stalkers. If you have a power drain, go ahead and drop it in the middle of the floor. Sometimes you'll catch a few of the stalkers off guard, and their shields and armor will drop instantly. Didn't think you could use the power drain in campaign, did you? Okay. You're going to want to get the two stalkers first that come up to you. They'll be armed with plasma rifles, but notably their most deadly feature is the flame grenades that they throw or fire bombs. Now again when you shoot dodge back be back behind the glass. When you do that they're less likely to try to dodge your firepower. Just don't shoot at the glass like I just did. Now from back here the war chieftain can't kill you. So this is the safest place you could be. Also noticed I picked up a fuel rod gun too. We're going to be using that in a little bit.
All right, most of the armor is down off the stalkers. We're going to want to take down his shields first. That'll reduce the number of laser blasts we have to use. Since we really don't know how many laser blasts we have, uh, we just want to be absolutely careful and make sure, because the laser is the best chance we have here against the War Chieftain. Now we have one more invisible brute. Well, that didn't work. This is why we stockpile the plasma pistols. Alright, now we're going to do the dodge trick. Oh! He actually did dodge that time. There we go. All right, now a single laser blast should do the trick. If not, definitely two will. And he used his power drain. All right, one more. So it takes two once the shields are down. Okay, the War Chieftain is down. Now you just want to clean up the rest of the Stalkers. And then you're going to want to activate that control panel. And the Flood are back. Equip that Fuel Rod Cannon and take out as many as you can. Some of them are going to have bullet-based weapons. Ah, uh, yes, those infection forms are quite a nuisance too. Now again, this is where the uh, Black Ice Spell kind of comes into your favor because it's easy to melee the Flood. It's also good to have a plasma pistol to deal with any shielded forms that you may come across. The fuel rod gun is a quick and effective method. Yeah, look at all those giant boogers. Now the mythic skull makes the shielded ones like the one you just saw tough. A good plasma punch can do the trick as well, which we may just end up doing for the heavy. Even flame grenades don't work against them. Against all other flood types, they're gods yet, but otherwise, no. There we go. Now pick up everything you need, stock up on grenades, and head down. We're almost there. Now, if you're using the slow and steady method, I'm going to show you how to set it up. The video would be way too long. But I'm going to show you how to set things up. Ah, oh, who put that tree there? Okay, you see those two hornets? We're not going to use them quite yet. We're going to use the tank. But you're going to want to reserve one. So take the first hornet over here and park it where the marine isn't going to take it later. They're notorious for stealing your cool stuff. So park it over here. Now you're going to go back and get the tank. And essentially what you're going to do is you're going to sit right there on that ledge where we just dropped off the Hornet and you're going to take out everything. You're going to take out the Banshees, you're going to tank out the ground troops, and you're going to try to take out a Scarab if it can show its back to you. Usually you can get at least one scarab with the tank by just shooting its back off. For the other scarab, you're going to be using the hornet because odds are the second scarab will learn from the first one's mistakes and is not going to turn its back to you. Usually the pelican can grab the attention of one of them though. So park yourself up here. Take out any ghosts that might be trying to sneak around because you don't want them coming up behind you. And then work on the banshees first. And then start shooting at the troops on the ground. Then go for the troops inside the scarab. And then the scarab itself. 